Greetings. It's me again, Dr. Kenneth Banks, and I'm really glad to be here. I'm glad that we can work within each other's space and to share. And I'm really excited about the past broadcast of where we'll be looking at disappointments. And I, I know from your responses, um, I've had some personal responses, and but I look forward to more uh, in terms of you putting something in the chat or an email. But I really, really want you to know that it has been encouraging to know that it, it has met a need. It, it's, it's identifying with some issues. It's bringing you into a space where you can be much more successful in your daily living. And, and as, 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 as I promised in the last broadcast to do the family, to look at the support in the family, I, I'm going to start. I'm going to go there a little bit today and, and hope maybe we could maybe do a, another broadcast with that same thing uh, to, to make sure we get it all fleshed out. So it, it's important for us to really agree that we belong to family. We just didn't drop here. It's not that the stork brought you and, and put you with other storks or and you migrated from stork to some village and found a house. No, you came within a family with a parent or parents and you identified with a structure that had some kind of context of lineage, of generations. So there would have been a, a grandmother, a great-grand, aunt and uncle's relations all coming out of this one birth thing that happened with this particular guardian or parents. And so it's important to know that when you are birthed, you are not being birthed as a, in, in singularity, in a vacuum, but you are birthed with a context of identity and you give a name. And we, we have to learn how to work that name and how to work who we are with that name within the context of familial, it is important for us to begin to identify the realities of that environment, the context of that name, the context of the people who are now involved in nurturing. Nature has been established, male, female. I am fine with that. And we, we are going to work out how that is presented as we I go through the whole well, cultural, traditional structures of training and nurturing uh, as we go from one year to two to three, etc. So it is important for us to begin to acknowledge how was all those dynamics played off um, with, within my birthing. Was it positive? Was it negative? Yes, I hear you, Dr. Nair, saying that it's, I come in not as a singular person, but there is that evidence of identity through lineage and through generations. But was I the right side? Did, did my parents or want me or my relatives want me to be male uh, and not female? Uh, what kind of skin did I have or what kind of hair? You know, and I'm saying this thing. To, 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 re, to help you realize that those foundational issues within the first couple of weeks or days of your birthday are, are important for the c continuum of identity. Because some people could be wishing, oh, well, I, I really should have had a boy, well, I really should have had a girl. And we, we have these adjectives, tomboy, sissy, uh, trying to define the sexuality here, where we have to, without even realizing that, hey, we have to say what that sex is and what that child is, without being disappointed about what we have received. I mean, today, I, I, I must say that technology allows us to define the sex within a particular period, and so there's some of us have to reconcile without disappointment of what sex we could have, and then we have to having the child being birthed, how do we identify this child in terms of the norms of my own family system? So I came out of a family system uh, being nurtured by my parents uh, and grandparents and being taught those traditions to become what I am. For instance, let me use me. You know, I was taught uh, coming out into the tradition, into the traditions of Niles. But of course, there was the extension of Best or Oxley because of a uh, bad fee. All those names were important because they were all represented my grandparents, my great grandparents. Uh, and 
there, there was something about my, my parents who were looking to see if I really was one of them. Hmm. So you, you, you're looking to see how should I be walking as I grow up? How should I be talking? What features should I have? My neck, my truth, you know, my, my, my cheek, my eyes, my feet. Everybody's looking to see how. And it was like, wow, he walks like this one. He doesn't walk like me. He talks like this one. He doesn't talk like me. And so by the time, let me push ahead a little bit here and come back now. By the time I may reach to 15 or you know, 20, and I'm still talking like people say, see, hmm, but you, well, you're in change. You're still talking like so, but you, you, you're still behaving like, I'm just, we, we put that kind of pressure, even in the young adult. But let's go back again to, to toddler or even to infancy. That kind of care of, of what we are expecting in terms of human development, in terms of growth. How do we work that without this point? And, and then when, when I could stop here a little bit again and look at the whole anatomy, the, the size of the head, uh, to make sure that, that I, I had all 10 fingers and 10 toes, well, how, was my head normal size and was it shaped properly? Or, and then and people are looking to see whether I have some disability in terms of speech or I'm taking long to think, or I'm, I'm moving slowly, and there's all kinds of wishes, because I have a frame in my head of what family ought to be, and what represents that family, meaning children being birthed. Because that is how the family grows, by the birthing, and I really want to establish that context of the, that person because it is so real in terms of the disappointments that are there present and sometimes we can't seem to overcome them. So that I have to learn that my child may have a disability, my child may not have had in, in the birthing all the fingers or all the limbs, but it is a child. How do I then work out those emotions? And that is a very crucial context for us to work with in terms of just beauty. How do I feel? What went wrong? Am I to blame the doctor? Is this genetic? Is it, was this something that somebody didn't tell me? And we, we go down rapid holes and we, we're looking for answers, trying to justify how I am behaving and why I'm behaving or why I look like or why I don't look like or what I have or I have less than uh, and these create anxieties within our very environment and so that therefore there's that kind of uncertainty of relating and uncertainty of conversation as we continue to walk and work out so, so I have to learn how to be content. Hmm, a big word. How to be content with what I have received as my son or daughter. I have to work on that. And it's important for me to be really work the whole issue of how we overcome. And I said, this is very foundational in terms of where we're going and how you are seeing this child. Because you are wanting that child to develop. There are people who are disappointed that by the time the child is two and a half, the child is not making sentences. Now, psychologically, we are not making sentences yet. There is still the vowel sounds, uh, the vowel sounding, and trying to get consonants to work with that and to try to get the child to get sentences. The child is still breaking up, and that may happen sometimes to four rather than two and a half to three, because you, see, you know what happened? Education system. You are not pressed by a governmental regime that tells you your child needs to be in preschool by two and a half, three. So you want that child to talk. You even want the child to start reading before the child goes to school to show up and say, my child read. Your child ought not to be reading maybe till six. But we have these norms and cultures that pressure us into nurturing prematurely. Was that good English? Or premature nurturing. <laughs> Making the child what the child should not be when you want the child because you don't want to be disappointed. And your disappointment is not even yours. It, it is coming to you from a bigger space. 
the cultures of relations and families and of course public that tells you what your child ought to be at a particular age when that child should be at that time. So, so I, I really want us to begin to see that this conversation is helping you to really d- d- diminish and to eradicate some of those psychological pressures that children are exposed to. And sometimes we are ignorant of it. We don't realize that our child is suffering from that kind of sen- insensitivity because they would have heard a conversation or seen a reaction or heard or Oh, the neighbor child is a, oh, my friend had a child, he's saying, oh, same time with you, but look, look, he walking, or oh, he talking, or oh, she, and so that we begin to then marginalize our children. And when they begin to grow with that same emotion, we are not aware of the repercussions in terms of their education. And I'm not just talking about formative education, but even non-formative, the way they respond to it at home. So we have to begin to see that that word disappointment is a reality in our very living and experiences we have daily with family. Let's go to even how we identify with grandparents and identify relations. Because to see, before the child was born, did we have proper relations with grand, grand, grandparents or, or aunties, etc.? So that when they are born, or maybe grand, grandparents may never have seen the grandchild for years, or the aunties, because I, I'm not going by them, I, I'm not talking to them. They are bad influence, you see. Because especially when you have the in-law part, you know, my family is what, but it's my partner's family. Wow. Hmm. Not at all. I want them to also, so there's another disappointment in terms of what you are discovering about the extensions. What you are discovering. And those discoveries are some things that you do not want to have within your sphere because you of yourself did not have that exposure and was not so trained by your parents. So that there's this war going on now between spouses and partners to because of what what the in-laws represent and you do not want your newly born child even though that child may be five three to five years still newly born child you don't want that child exposed to this and so there is that kind of withdrawal isolation from which makes the child indifferent to social experiences and the child is limited in their social activities because you have to go and find children their age to play with and to cause them to know how to talk, how to to relate, how to share because they, they miss the cousins because of some personal issues and that in itself is another disappointment. Now, you may not think that your child is disappointed, but your child may not use the word disappointed, but there is something lacking like, why aren't we? I missed it. Where, I, 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 do I have aunties? Because when I went to school and we do social studies, even private school, there's a structure. And I heard the word ah, but I never had an auntie or uncle. So that we have to remember that we cannot just be isolated or insulated by the better word ourselves because of family friction and not realizing it's affecting the growing generation, your children. So we, we need to even look at that. I'm just laying down these dynamics here for us to be reflective and to begin in your own self as you as you watch or even after you watch to replay and come and say, hey, you know, let's have a discussion here because this is so relevant. And the child is moving on. Yes, 24 hours is 24 hours. The child is not going to not grow within the 24 hours because of what, how you feel. Around. Each of us, what, no matter what emotions we have, 24 hours is 24 hours. It elapses into another zero and another day starts. 
with another experience, with more situations. So that we have to learn how we are defining the daily routines and the daily practices to bring us into this context of true family identity. So, as we go along, by the time the child becomes toddler and, and begins to practice, like, observing and watching and learning through non-formative education coming out of that the parental and the family exposures. And I dare say if the child has siblings again, the child's going to be confronted with differences in terms of behaviors and voices, etc. So how do I get that balance as a personality? There is the context of comparison that we have to watch. The first child was so, or the second was so, why are you so? You, this one was doing this at this age, how come you not? So we, again, that shows disappointment in what is at hand. We have to be careful how we are relating the at hand, the very immediate situation of the present as against what has been passed from other children. So we, we are working towards it. And now, this is important. And you hear me using this word, this is important, it is. And I want to raise stress because when that child begins school, whether kindergarten or primary, you realize that there is a lot happening there within that child's mind. How is this child going to really be assertive when this child is not as aggressive? in terms of being educated and the intellectual capacity is not as the other child. The social integration, the social skills are not as sharp as, or this child may have more social skills in terms of where they're going. So it is important for how we are redefining how we are going forward. How do we decide where to go, what to do, what, what. Let's take me here. You're looking at the camera. You're expecting to see me for the whole time span. You're expecting me to face you. If I look away, or if I look down, if I decide to do something, or if I look around here, you say, what going on? What going on? Like he forget where he is? No, I've not forgotten. But why is it so difficult for you to be patient with my movement that is supposedly unorthodox or different from? And why it is not a part of me to say, okay, let's see what's happening here is it maybe there's a discomfort on my side you don't know but you see we are not so trained even as adults to evaluate these circumstances and to establish the difference within our children so we are looking for the norm this is what i know this is how we behave we nines do this way we edwards do this way or we marks do this way or we and Zars do it this way. Fine. But this child is doing it differently. Are we willing to sit without anxiety, without, may I use, stresses, to evaluate the child's present situation within all that is happening? Are we willing to ask questions? And, and that is so important. What is norm? Keep, 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 keep the camera. So that you know. May I pause if me may, may I I gotta do I pause this one. I do I really pause you know, but you know working on camera uh, and videos sometimes keeps you in a construct with that constrains you and takes away the joy of really sharing. And you know, by now Dr. Nance is quite a free agent in terms of really relaxing and, and, and wanting to, to engage with you and to make you comfortable as we, we share. So, so that 
try and not say don't 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 look oh god there he goes again no i am here i am here i am here so i, I want to see that we behave the same without shame there she goes again you see what look what you're doing why you can't be like a brother why you can't be like a sister why can't be like this one hold on the child is a, in, an individual and we are not to air these disappointments so readily as to enforce that what the child is doing is wrong or inadequate we want to preserve identity awareness we want to let the child become very much in touch with themselves and understand the differences that they present as something worthwhile for the family as a whole we need to capture that we need to capture that context and work with that child <clears throat> and offer that child the opportunity to develop their own skills yes their own skills because you are working skills from the inside when you give an instruction each child will hear that instruction but each child will articulate the instruction differently because of their own experiences and we have to be careful not to be disappointed by what we are seeing no what we are experiencing each child is different i know it i've been there they all different same teaching same exposures but they are receiving receptivities there because of face because of how they are seeing you respond to them each child interprets the response the response yes differently the responses sorry differently and so therefore they are going to image that it's going to get into their brain into storage so the next time you come they know how to react and you say oh i see a pattern here but you see they are not just having a pattern for development it could be a pattern of defense because they don't want to hear a wrong or oh, i should be like this other one or oh, i should be like that one we are really establishing single identity but yet that single identity has to belong to what is called family you realize in parenting is really a, a, a argument away from disappointment and to find some way of regularizing behaviors that will not be compromising family ethics and family norms and cultures we want to maintain those things we, my, my parents would want to be a nurse you see me here coming inside of this house what every alone outside leave it in because we don't do it so here yeah. but to send the child to school to learn outside of the house to learn with a strange voice and a strange person called teacher amongst 60 let, let's say 200 egos that are not yours within a classroom of 20 30 people who are who have different egos that are not yours so that we are exposing our children to negativity and i use the word negativity to let me use the word they're different to differences that we are still going to be fighting to find hey leave that outside they can't leave it they spend more time in a classroom environment or in a school environment than they spend in the house by the time they get up in the morning to get ready after sleeping for eight hours let's say and they get ready for two and they go and they leave they reach just they leave home by seven in some countries seven and they have to to come back by four or five that's five that's almost nine hours then. Nine and eight, seventeen, seventeen and seven. Where did I say? Between play and some for mommy and getting ready and homework, you know, we we don't see our children and connect with them as much as we ought to because they are involved in a pattern of education or or being educated that is a re realigning behaviors. 
and affecting cultures and traditions. We want them to leave it outside. Don't bring us in here. But it's, I say it again, I repeat. We send them to learn new things. What are they going to do with it? We therefore have to not to be disappointed with what we are receiving and learn how to manage and how to bring it and help them to see that what you're learning here is a little different from here. But what you're learning does have some value. How do we therefore realign our very cultures and traditions to go forward? I'm going to stop you for now and I'm going to really resume this on the next broadcast. So come back next week <laughs> to hear this. So, so, but, so that in leaving, you realize between birds and let's say six, seven years, there is so much happening. And that word disappointment is so real because we can sometimes value what our children are as against what we have expected out of our past values. We have to become current to go forward smoothly without that resistance and to bring that wholeness to the family and to learn to overcome those surprises that we call disappointment and come into that place where there's that homeostasis and that family identity that brings the cohesiveness within us. So I, I want us to be really thankful for going forward and I trust that I'll see you next week. Dr. Nair say sign off. Remember, it's not about the past experiences. It's about the present taking us forward. Have a good week.